I love this place. I like this place, this province is, you know, a place that I want to spend the rest of my life. And I was fortunate enough to get a career in firefighting to support a life and a lifestyle that I want to live. Firefighting is, is a hard job. And you see the good, the bad, the ugly. Fly fishing for me is that gateway. It's that getaway for me. It's that space that keeps my mind occupied on something different all the time. And I'm f so fortunate to have fallen in love with that. I was kind of the, the outlaw where I never really had a home river. So as soon as I got my license, the first thing I wanted to do was take off and, and hit a new place. You know, that's how we found the serpentine was hearing whispers of a really cool place. And I'd always heard about it. I mean, I've heard about the Serpentine and I've heard about some of the big fish that have been caught there. And I heard about the lodge that was there. It was relatively inaccessible, you know, 850 kilometers of highway driving till you get to a little dirt road. It's about two hours through that till you get to the lake. And then you're commuting about 12 kilometers down river to get to one of the campsites where we like to stay. So it's over a full day of travel. I mean, it's worth every every bit of it. It's fucking gorgeous. In the morning, I'll be gone, gone, gone. I guess that I'll be headed south again. And it's only been six days since I set foot in Dawson City. And you put up with me much longer than I planned, than I planned. Yeah, you let me stay much longer than I planned. But tonight we'll sit down and watch the sun swing round, round, round. Upon the dome road high above this town. And it's sure been good to see you. Tomorrow I'm headed for Argentina. And I can be there by September if I leave now, if I leave now. And then we're gonna get that a little bit more stretch. How was your paddle? Beautiful. Fishing is not taken off your total. That's a good line. If that's the case, Matt could live long gone. Bill Butt, the retired guide on Serpentine, and Ray Humber, the entrepreneur who started, you know, Newfound Outfitting and the operation that's down there on the Serpentine now. Like those guys, they are true woodsmen that have a passion for just being outside. They go out and they need clothes on their back, fire, and the stars above their head, and everything else is good enough. And it's better than good enough, it's perfect. She's as beautiful as she is tough, but as if that ain't enough, no, her heart belongs to the wind up in the pines, in the pines. Her heart belongs to the wind up in the pines. And I fear she'll never let it tangle up in mine. Yeah, I fear she never let it tangle up in mine. Yeah, 
know, when I retired from teaching, I mean, I knew Ray a little bit, you know, from obviously it's a small community of fellows that are at the kind of stuff that we're at. So, so I knew Ray a little bit and I called him up and he was interested. He was looking for a guide and told him I'd be available for salmon fishing and moose hunting. And he said, come on board. So yeah, yeah, really enjoyed it. This was my drive to work every morning coming down that river, you know, it didn't really matter if it was raining or sun was shining. It's, it's the most spectacular valley in the province. So it's a job to beat that. How's the fish? On any fish? We seen one up there at, what was it, the first pool we went to? Yeah, what's the name of that pool there? Where? The one right in front of camp. Humber's Pool, he calls it. Humber's Pool? That's what's on the chart. Yeah, and then Chad. I don't know why he got that name on it. Yeah, I wonder. <laughs> I used to come down there when I was, my guy, young. I don't even know I was a teenager. Come down my father. We used to have an old camp there in the woods. Uh, back in the day, I said to my wife, what would I do if I were retired. I said I'd hike, I'd hunt, and I'd fish. I said I'm gonna make a living at doing things that I like. Ray, do you have a fly of choice? Well, why not? I'll try one with this crystal flash. Uh, okay. That's a, that blue one? Yeah, that's a good one. That's, that's the first size fly. That's a good fly for this time. This one. I went back to school in 93 and they, they offered the first adventure tourism course in Cornerbrook. Started our business. So I took four fishermen. And then it grew. And then the cabin grew. Then it grew. I had a guy from Mexico one day, and uh, he was trying to, trying to teach under the cast, and he pounded the water, and he whipped the water. You know what it was like, fish are not going to take. And I said, let me show you one cast. So you gotta, this is how you do it. Now watch me now. So I took the rod, and I put it out. And as soon as I did that friggin' water, the back come out of the water, whew, mouth open, and gra grabbed the dry fly, and the, the fish took off right on down to the top of Spring Run, all the line backing, and then the fish jumped over by the other bank, the rocky bank on the other side, and he never bowed to the fish and lot. They come out, but it was a big fish too. That was a big fish. <laughs> yeah, I'll never forget that. It's a good line. Lo lower your tip of your rod now. There you go. <laughs> Tourism back when I started was, are you crazy? Are you going into tourism? Hiking, backpacking, are you foodies? You're gonna make, make money at doing that stuff? Are you gonna support a family doing that? But we did. I built a lodge here because I said, it's a shame to have a place so beautiful and no one gets to see it. No one knows it's there. And I said, why not show it off? And we showed it off. Holy shit. We paddled down here yesterday. It was a beautiful sunny day. Knowing full well that this weather was coming, but I was holding on to a sliver of hope that maybe the mountains would have something different in store and push the weather off a little bit off the coast or something, but it's 6 a.m. and it's absolutely dumping. Uh, total rainfall, 50 to 80 millimeters. We're in it. Bro. We're in it. What do we do? In it till the end. Did you ever ask the Ouija board what happens when you die? Oh, it always had an answer. Who would know if it were right? We used to stand under the east troughs and let our boots fill up with rain. We'd write Grammy and Grampy letters until the sun came out again. And our mom would always let us pretend that sticks were knives and guns. And for the most part, we were careful, didn't want to hurt no one. And will you tell me all your stories from the times when you were young? Oh, I wish I could have been there, could have shared in all that fun. I wish I could have been there, could have shared in all that fun.
baby, baby, it's time to tell me what you've done. There's a policeman in the yard. This don't look good for anyone. If this were a hundred years ago, we could shoot him and just run. Spend our lives ruling the canyons with our bandanas and our guns. Stealing cattle, robbing trains, and taking life just as it comes. Oh, someday they'd make a movie of our lives. Brutal, hey? Like, this is not as bad as Labrador, but um, it's pretty bad. Jesus Christ! <laughs> <laughs> the mosquitoes are insane. So sad. The mosquitoes won't leave me alone. I just want to catch a salmon. Do we really want to camp up here tomorrow night? <laughs> Oh, that's a fish. That was a fucking fish. Yeah, a fucking tiny wet fly. That goes a whole faithful cast across at. Oh, another one just came off. I'm gonna try a bomber. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> what are you doing? Look at the flies. Fuck! Oh, hook the fly. I can't believe I fucking lost that. So nice to see it just come up and take it, Matt. You should have seen the take. Man, you like mountain biking? Try salmon fishing. You know, salmon fishing's yeah. the best. It's the best time ever. Drew, you like mountain biking and snowboarding. You'd love salmon fishing. I tell ya, salmon fishing's a hoot. Days aren't getting any easier. So it's currently 5.27. And slept on the ground last night. Back feels fantastic. I actually feel pretty good though. Um, I'm really looking forward to walking a kilometer down this muddy path and uh, turning around and walking back and then getting back in bed. You were hurling across the prairies. It was blowing in the wind. She had her feet up on the dashboard. It was storm clouds rolling in. Just the two of us. Of we were chasing the sun as it said. Well, I, was, I was like there fishing down, and uh, before the fish struck, mascot and Bill all yelled at me, "Pull up!" I like held the line just like I am now, and I didn't ease up. And uh, the, the fish hammered it and just blew the reel, like the line out of my hands. And then when I stopped it, it, uh, it broke the line. But just being here is pretty amazing. So the fish is a, is a bonus. On a friggin' muddler, man. We found a fish. Just when you thought it was over. We really do live in here. This is gonna be some tug of war here, boys. This is for all the marbles here now. Yep. Oh, he's big fish. Well, I got some pressure on this fish. Come on, buddy. Get ready, Al. Fucking right, buddy. Woo! What's this, man? <laughs> what a hug! What a hug! Out a boy! Al, out a boy!
beauty. <laughs> what an angel. That was sick. We needed that one. Oh, my sleeves are so wet. That's what I want to hear. Big day. Large day on the surf. We gotta get you tied into one now. I don't know why we do it to ourselves, Jake. That's crazy, Matt. You've been uh, doing some serious fishing lately. Yeah. What's crazy about it? <laughs> <laughs> Can you imagine we hooked a fish now just a facial expression on camera? Oh. <laughs> Had a boy, buddy. Pretty uh, yeah. women was That's a fan. See them showing up their beauty. See them right before your eyes. Better get to work, just as you Better boy, learn buddy. to and write. Woo! Else you'll never be a poet. With pretty women by your side. Well, she was standing down on Queen Street. Right there amongst the pretty lot And I knew right when I saw her Just how it feels like getting shot I saw her shining out. like an angel Woo! I saw her high above the clouds yeah. And everything that used to matter It didn't matter to me now But I'm in love with my baby Yeah, I bet you love her too but if you ain't like me, boy, then she will not continue. So good, my dog. Better get to work, Jesse. Better learn to read and write. Else you'll never be a poet with pretty women by your side. It's hard to envision a place any more spectacular, certainly in this province, right? Like the, you know, the highest point is over here in the Lewis Hills, and you get blown in the mountains pristine meandering river coming down, you know, the, the king of sports fish in it. A bit sentimental, really. Uh, when you're fished here and been here so long as we have, our family, our friends, so many years of delightful trips whether be hunting or fishing. Uh, we always, we always came at will. We come out top. We always got our animals. We always got our fish. The beauty of the place, it means the world to me, really. Yeah. You can't beat this. You cannot beat the Serpentine Valley. No, cannot be beat. I don't even know if it can be matched, right? I haven't seen them, but I'm sure they're out there, probably somewhere, but I haven't seen them personally. So the Serpentine means the world to me, really. Growing up, I mean, I started 
fishing in central Newfoundland and, and sitting on the riverbanks. I was the youngest by 50 years. So that whole time I was down there chatting these guys up and getting stories and just river talks, man. Just hearing what they had to say and talking about places in the province, talking about places they've been, talking about what the fishing used to be like on the river. Those river talks kind of stuck with me. And then as I grew up and got older, it was one, some of the things that I really appreciated was going to a place. And if you're not the only one there, hit the river bank, crack a beer, shoot the shit with the old skipper that's on the bank who just came in or the other guy who, you know, is just gearing up to go out, get their story, hear what they're about. And that's kind of the inspiration behind this. And hearing their stories is something important to the next generation. Being able to do that and then firsthand go down to the exact same place with that guy who did it 25 years before you and see how passionate he is about that place and sentimental and he's, you know, welling up with emotion because he, it's everything to them. Like, this is his world. It's just, it adds a whole other element of perspective. You know, holy shit, this place is special. Matt, feel lucky. Oh, what a catch I got, boys. We're here, it's uh, 0800. We're departing. We left Cornwall at 4 a.m. I slept for about 32 minutes. Where you at, dog? West Coast. We on the serpentine. There's a great big moose in the middle of the road. In the middle of the road. There's a great big moose in the middle of the road. 